Hello and welcome back to day number two of the Mythic Championship 6 Richmond, Virginia. Here for you we have the day two metagame breakdown for the standard portion of the event. And look! Even higher percentage this time of Soul Thai food. It went up 0.8% from 37 to 37.8. Simic food same deck omitting black 19.4% versus 19% the day before bant food however did go down 2% i think bant's the like least good of the 3 i i don't remember what white card they're playing but it's definitely better to have the black sideboard cards i mean grasp of noxious grasp is just insanely good it kills oko it kills crassus it kills wicked wolf so it kills everything important. It kills Questing Beast. You know, it kills everything relevant right, right now. So I think Soul Thai Food is just the way to go. As you can see by it being 38% of day two, essentially. And then we got, like, other stuff. Small percentages. Very small percentages. But yeah. Still about, what? What is that? 1.2, 2.1, 25, 27.1. 64.1% Broco. Alright, let's get in there. Let's see who, uh, who edges out the top 8. Alright. Round number 12. Golgari Adventure versus Just Guy Fires. Okay. We saw this uh, Golgari Adventure deck yesterday in the final round. Looks like he picked up two losses in the... Uh, limited portion but his his standard deck did go 5-0 yesterday the Golgari adventure uh, against the Jeskai fires deck which this is the one that plays the fires of innovation enchantment which allow it costs four one red three colorless enchantment lets you play a permanent equal to the amount of lands you have with casting cost equal to the amount of lands you have twice per turn and that's the only spells you can cast so you basically get two free spells. You get to cast two spells with all of your mana, basically. twice. You know, Use all of your mana twice, essentially. So you just get to start pumping out, you know, two spelling giant game-changing spells. Like, you know, uh, Cavalier of Gales is one of the ones they use in this Jeskai version. There, there was a different version of this deck when it first came out. Uh, and it plays, like, six-drop Chandra. It just plays really, really expensive, good, strong value cards. Two of them a turn. That's, what, Foulmire Knight? This is a really good card. Adventure, instant speed, draw a card, lose a life, and it's a 1-1 one, one death touch for one. It's very, very good. Vraska on an empty board. Feels good. Probably just going to plus two, not sack anything. He's, those are all Scrylands he has in play. A lot of Scrylands. I guess they really have to find their fires. They want to play at turn four like every game, so. Although Vraska can destroy an enchantment, I believe. So. Okay, he's going to play Drawn from Dreams, which is look at the top seven, pick two, put them in your hand. This card is essentially dig through time, but sorcery speed instead of instant speed, and it doesn't have delve, but it also doesn't cost seven. So not quite as good as dig through time, but still a very good card. I'm actually surprised it hasn't been played in modern yet. It costs four, which is kind of like the upward end of what you want things to cost in modern, but that it's really powerful. Scry 7, draw 2, basically. 
I mean, there have been the uh, decks that play into the storybook, which is draw four for four, essentially. It only costs four when your opponent has cards in their graveyard. Seven cards, I believe. That magic number seven, Threshold. All right, he's going to sack Falmire Knight to draw a card. What does that Vraska Ultimate do? Okay, so he's playing Cavalier of Flames also. Uh, and Time Wipes, of course. Got to clear that board. All right, he's got Fires of Innovation. And Prison Realm, get rid of Raska, seems good. Yeah, Fires of Innovation, super powerful. Now he can play two 5-drops next turn, which is going to be both Cavaliers, I assume. Oh, he drew another Vraska. Okay, so I'm sure he's going to play Vraska and kill the Fires of Innovation. Or no, he can't. Vraska can only target... That Vraska can only target things that cost three or less, right? This is going to be a very strong turn. So he's going to run out the Cavalier of Gales first. Let you brainstorm. God, you look at this creature, Cavalier of Gales, compared to like the original set of magic, like the best creature. With Shiv and Dragon. Pretty much. And it was just a 5-5 five five with Fire Breathing. Flying for 6 mana. And this Cavalier costs 5 mana. And it lets you brainstorm. And it has a recursion effect. <laughs> like, it's just so much better. Creatures have gotten so much better than what they were in the original set of Magic. Like, the original, like, first, like, I don't know, like... 15, 20 sets of magic. Like, the creatures just were not that strong compared to the spells. And then creatures all of a sudden just got a huge upgrade in, like, Zendikar. When, like, the Titans came out, people were like, whoa, these have, like, ETB effects and, like, attack trigger effects and, like, all this crazy good shit. And they're huge and, like, not very expensive. And when before it was, like, Jazam Jin, like, that was the shit. That was just, like, a 5-5 five five for 4 mana. Just a vanilla 5-5 five five and it dealt one damage to you during your upkeep. But now we have like Gurmag Angler, which is like one black basically. For a 5-5. Five five. On like turn two. But Jazam was pretty good back then. I had I played a deck with, with four Jazam Jins in it. It was a black-red deck. And Sedge Troll. Sedge Troll was, was super good back then, too. It was a 3-3. Three, three. Well, it was a 2-2, two, two, but it was a 3-3 three, three if you had a Swamp. Uh, and it was one red, two colorless. And it was Regenerate for one black mana. So 3-3 three, three, Regenerate for three. And it could... Yeah. You could, you could kill, like, Juggernauts with it and not die. It was pretty strong. And of course, you could play one Soul Ring back then too, and Dark Ritual. So you could you could you could get out of Jazam turn one. You could like Dark Ritual, Soul Ring, 
play Jazam turn one. It's pretty strong. Alright, he's gonna kill the Cavalier of Gales. With Murderous Rider. And it's gonna shuffle back into his deck. And then he gets to scry two, I believe. Alright, he uses the Fae of Wishes adventure spell, goes against Nickel Bolas from his sideboard, and then plays Nickel Bolas. Yeah, that's this this card plays or this deck plays four Fae of Wishes too, to just grab whatever you know big badass card they need out of their sideboard. They have a bunch of one ofs in the sideboard. So Nickel Bolas is gonna do a lot here for him. I'd be very surprised if the Fires deck lost at this point. He, he's gotten his, his his deck rolling. I don't think this Golgari Adventure deck is really meant um, to be able to win against this deck. I think the Golgari Adventure deck is more for the Oko matchup. For the food decks. Um... Although, I mean, he's got his Death Touchers. He's holding back that 6-5, so... But, yeah, I don't think you can... expect to uh, overcome what this deck can do. Yeah, he's just going to scoop him up. Like, this deck is just, just keeps trying and just getting fatties to play. It's kind of like Tron in that respect. Like, if you don't, like, disrupt them and, like, get a clock on the board, like, you're not going to win the end game. And they're not showing us the sideboard again. I don't know why they don't show sideboards at the Mythic Championships. I thought it was made public to everyone. Alright, game number two. Lovestruck Beast Adventure Spell. Make a 1-1 one, one human. It's so funny, too, in this format, this Oko is just so much better than Teferi Time Raveler, and he's so powerful, too. There's just these absurd, two absurdly powerful three-drop Planeswalkers. And even the Royal Scions is pretty good. Like, the Royal Scions is about where a three-drop Planeswalker should be, but that card is not even played. It's just not even close to as powerful as the other two three-drop Planeswalkers. Like, even though it's seeing play in Modern, like the guy who, who won the last... Uh, Star City game open with Grixis Death Shadow was playing two Royal Scions in his 75. Card worked great. Gives plus two plus O and trample. That's great in Grixis. Like, all right, Deafening Clarion clears the board. Bring his upkeep. Oh no, is it, a, is it an instant or a sorcery? No, it's a sorcery. Okay, he did it on his turn. Never mind. Rankle. Rankle, master of Prankle. Getting in there. Rankle's pretty good. I like Rankle. Especially since there's no, like, lightning strike. You know? There's actually very little in terms of, like, decent burn right now which is why red is kind of like been back burnered like red would be able to fight against these oko decks if it actually had like faster starts it really doesn't you have to play like you know the three drop 
um, Adamant Burn Spell, which deals four for three, which is decent, but, like, it's just expensive. You need, like, one drop. You know, you got Shock, and that's about it. And then you got Light Up the Stage, but that's Sorcery Speed, and, like, you have to turn it on with, uh, you know, dealing damage. We lo They lost Lightning Strike, and that didn't get reprinted, and they lost uh, Wizard Lightning, which was the other, like, one drop if you have a wizard. Ooh, Cavalier of Night. This is a sweet picture. I love this card. He's only a 4-5. The other ones are bigger, but he's lifelink. And uh, when he enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target creature and opponent controls. And then when it dies, you can return a creature of 3-drop or less from your graveyard to your hand or the battlefield. One of the two. He's pretty good. All the Cavaliers are pretty good. Like I think they're pretty well designed, but... They kind of feel like mini titans. They're just like a little bit smaller than titans generally and like one cheaper to cast. But they've got some good abilities. Alright, so he's got Teferi and uh, Fires of Innovation out. Yeah, I don't know if he's packing like Assassin's Trophies uh, stuff to get rid of enchantments. Ooh, Liliana Dreadhorde General. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, now he's able to cast sorceries at instant speed. So can he? Does fires of innovation let you? Is it is it per turn you can cast too? So if if it's on his opponent's turn, he can cast like. With a Teferi on board, he can cast dig through dreams, and Clarion, and. Like two spell on his opponent's turn too. I didn't even realize the deck could do that. That's pretty nuts, if that's how it works. Kenrith. Yeah, Kenrith, the Return King, is very, very strong. 5-5 five, five with just a slew of different abilities. So he's going to give all creatures trample and haste probably here. Yeah, he's going to trample over a seven at least.
Yeah, creatures you control get so he's both of his creatures got plus two power and trample, so it was enough to kill both of his creatures and trample and kill Liliana. probably take Drawn from Dreams here. Yeah, it's very for sure. And he's gonna murder Shrider that's a the Cavalier. Alright, well we still got a game on our hands. Oh, he's drawing another Kinrith for us. He's gonna draw a card. It draws you cards too, it's so rude. It, it card's just so good in this deck. Alright, gets another Liliana. Takes care of Kenrith. Prison Realm, that's good. I don't know what that full art card. Oh, it's time wipe. Okay. He can, however, kill Prison Realm. With Raska. Seems good. Activate Castle Vantress. This card is very, very useful in the Fires deck because they basically just want to find their fatties and they want to find their. I mean, once they have their Fires of Innovation, they just want to find fatties after that so they can just scry through their deck. And they don't have to use their mana once the card, once Fires of Innovation is out, so like they just get to cast stuff for free. That's very, very strong.
right, he's going to Clarion for his second spell and pass it back. All right, he's going to float a green, sack his forest. Probably play Cavalier of Night here, yeah. Okay, during his upkeep, he's going to scry two for draw. He needs a fatty here. Okay, I think one of them's Fay of Wishes. He's looking at casualties of war. Very strong. Three for one here. Of wishes, grabbing casualties of war, I suspect. He's going to bring the innkeeper back. Okay. Sounds good. Draw his castle walk coin. And draw a card off of it. That was a good draw. That's the 2-2 uh, two -two flyer that adventure lets you get a creature back. Order of Midnight. I love the artwork. I love both of the artworks on Order of Midnight. The uh, the alternate art too. It's got the giant like blackbird. He's riding. It's cool. He's gonna get Cavalier of Night back. No. Yeah, Cavalier of Night. Can't cast it this turn. Hits to Fairy for one. Actually, meaningful here because now he can't minus to Fairy to draw a card. So he's seeing if he wants to, he's probably going to scry here during the upkeep. Oh, he's not going to. He must have already knew what his top card was. Oh, is that a Fires of Invention? Oh no, it's a Cavalier Flame. Okay, he must have known what his... Oh yeah, he can give it haste. Yep, that's game. GG. Yeah, it, it looks like that Golgari deck is just not tuned to beat this Fires of Innovation deck. Damodorosa! Who's on Simic Food against Soul Type Food? Yeah, this is 
Side match. I'm just gonna go through here. Time on wait, they're six and five. Does five losses make it into the top eight? I think you have to, you can only have four losses to get in the top. Maybe four losses and a draw. I think they're already out of top eight contention. Alright. Around number 13. Alright, back to Cuneo with Selesnia Adventure. This is the first deck we saw. Versus Simic Flash. Okay. Both 10 and 2. Looks like both standard decks are working out for them. I'm not familiar with the Simic Flash deck. Of course it plays Wicked Wolf. I guess it probably plays the like... Oh, this is the one that plays the... Uh, the 2-drop Flash Merfolk. That's a 2-1 and it gets plus 1, plus 1 counter. If you play a spell on your opponent's turn. This deck's actually pretty cool. I've seen this deck before, actually. It's not bad. Alright, we got two Innkeepers out, though. And he's just, like, firing on all cylinders. This is what the... Selesnia deck does. Now he's got three innkeepers out. Tut, draw three cards. Loxodon? Did he find the Loxodon? Looks like he found the Loxodon. Yeah, that's just overwhelming. Like, what's this? What's this Flash deck gonna do now? Like, what's any deck gonna do? You have to have like a board wipe for like, like this kind of explosive start. Like, that's just overwhelming. He's like, I'll play my two one Flash Merfolk. Okay. I've got five two twos, a four four, and a one two. Oh, excuse me, two of them are two threes, but yeah, you get the idea. Oh, he's playing Frilled Mystic and Night Pack Ambusher. Okay, cool. I guess those are Ambushers and not Wicked Wolves. Oh, yeah, because those are the Flash ones that make wolves. Yeah, yeah, this deck's cool, but doesn't seem good against this Selesnya deck. I think it's oh, and then he gets Formation. Yeah, Scoop. <laughs> that gives everything plus one attack. Vigilance, I believe. And indestructible. GG. That was a quick one. No, oh, Javier Dominguez running the gruel. This is what he won the uh, the online Mythic Championship with. Gruel aggro, baby. I kind of like it. It's pretty good against the Oko decks. But I still don't think it's the best deck. I think Soltai Oko is the best. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, game two, turn one, Guild of Goose. And we got turn one, once upon a time, gets a land. Doesn't have a turn one play. Hmm. I 
Oh, he played it that way because he didn't have another planes in hand, so that land was going to come into play tap next turn. So he wanted to get use out of the innkeeper the turn he played it. However, he did draw planes, which uh, he didn't know he was going to draw it, obviously, but had he played the forest first and the innkeeper, he would have been able to play. Actually, I don't know if he has another one drop in his hand. A green one drop. Alright, he's going to Aether Gust the Innkeeper back on the top of his library. And he played a Cutthroat before that, so that gets a counter. Honestly, I don't know how this Flash deck is going to beat the Selesnya deck. The Selesnya deck just goes wide and huge. Huge and wide. Um, and it's got Chump Blockers for days, so like the, the big Brian... Brian Cutthroat, dude, doesn't seem great. All right, he's ether gusting the innkeeper again. Oh, he's just delaying. I don't know. Gets him for three on Oko. Keeps making food with Oko, okay. Not sure what his plan is here.
right, applies another brine board cutthroat. He's stealing his innkeeper, but gives him a food for the innkeeper. But he's slowly getting, he's got two March of the Multitudes in his hand, too. He's just going to march for a buttload this turn. How much is that? Was that six to three? He's going to march for eight. Eight one ones. In addition to his five creatures, yeah. This flash deck doesn't seem like it can really compete with what this Lesney deck's doing. Yeah, all those one ones have lifelink. I don't, I don't think. Like the only way I think he can win this game is if he gets brazen borrowers out like early on and somehow like raises them. But I, that just seems highly unlikely. Because all he has to do is march multitudes once for like a, a big amount, or locks it on and make his team huge. And it's just like you're not racing this deck. Yeah, now he's going to march for like a million. <laughs> Eleven, fifteen. Yeah, he's got 23 one ones and like four other creatures. Yeah, you're dead, bro. You be dead. Martial Multitude is gross. 
The fact that they have lifelink too is just insane. It just ma it just shows that you're not going to race them once once you get a huge amount of those out. What, he's got seven blockers versus 26 attackers. That's at least 19 damage. You did, bud. You did. You did. To do is count the blockers, Cuneo. Just count the blockers, bro. You kill him by a point of damage if it, that's if he just blocks everything that's not on a one one. versus food. That's time walk. Food versus food. Boring. 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 Javier Dominguez. He's doing pretty good. Do the triple ember cleave. Four Domri's ambush. Let's go. Four questing beasts. Four lo yeah, love struck is really good. This card, I think, is what like makes these decks that aren't Oko be able to Fight Oko. It's pretty cool. Dude, is Paulo Vitor gonna get another top eight? Bro. 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 All right, here we go. Round 14. Soul Tie Food versus Slazzy Adventure. All right, let's see which which deck is stronger. Slazzy deck is meant to take this deck out. Let's see if it can. Oh, no turn to Oko. That's good for the Slazzy player. Not quite the start he wants. Just playing nothing on turn one and a Shepherd of the Flock on turn two. Not the greatest.
mean, his hand is really bad. He's got, what, another land? A Conclave Tribunal. Locks it on Smiter. Yeah, not good. Or Venerated Locks it on in Conclave Tribunal and two lands, yeah. Not great. And he's got, what, Nissa coming out? Oko first. So he draws another land. Alright, he's probably going to have to Conclave Tribunal this Oko. Or Vraska, one of the two. Probably the Oko. Yeah. His one saving grace is that Austin's missing land drops. He's kind of at this awkward point where he can only he can't put out Nissa. I mean he can play he he might just play a Hydroid Crassus on two here. Take up the Vraska and not sacrifice anything. Alright, he's gonna make a food and sack it, okay? Finds the land. Keeps up Noxious Grasp. Okay, that's good. Yes. He's probably going to play the Love Struck Beast this turn, so he's just going to kill the Love Struck Beast. That was pretty heads up. If he hadn't drawn the land, though, he'd be in a bad... He'd be in a... I mean, he wouldn't be in a bad spot, but... I mean, since the Selesnya deck is really underperforming... Um... But it wouldn't have worked out good for him. I think the safer play would have just been to run out Hydroid Crassus on two. Okay, now he's just going to throw out Nissa, probably. Yep, this game's probably just over now. He's going to play a gigantic Crassus next turn. Yeah, this is over. Got two Planeswalkers out. Got the venerated locks it on now, but
Delta, Hydro Cross is on 10. Seems good. Draw 5, gain 5. He's giving him up. That was brutal. Alright, game number two. Once upon a time, finds an innkeeper. Already a better start from last game. Probably going to throw out innkeeper here. Get the ball rolling. Well, now he's got no lands. And he mulled the six. Ooh, misses the land drop again. Ouch. Although no Gilded Goose for the food. Yeah, the food player's not doing much either yet. It's good. Wow, no turn three play either. I guess he kept the hand because it had Massacre Girl. I guess that's like... Although turn five Massacre Girl is... I don't know. You could be dead by then. Like, if he had had a strong start and had Venerated locks it on turn 3, that, that probably is dead before you play the Massacre Girl. I, I think this deck can easily kill you on turn 4. If you have no disruption. Alright, he finds another one spawn at the time. And a 4 and a planes. So now he's, now he's doing stuff. Unfortunately, now we got Wicked Wolf. No more Innkeeper. Alright, he's going to flower for another land. Yeah. Since the innkeeper got killed, his hand got significantly worse. He's got two venerated loxodons that he can't cast at the moment. Alright, he's going to trade with the Wicked Wolf. I think that's what Austin wanted him to do. So now he's going to pray Vraska and kill the last creature and have a... Alright, 
Oh, maybe he's gonna sack the food instead. I kind of feel like you killed a creature here. Like, as long as you keep him on zero creatures, like, he's not doing anything. I don't know. I wonder why he tapped the fairy guide mother instead of just attacking with it and paying the mana. I mean, it's only one point of damage, but still, that can sometimes mean the game. I think that was a slight play mistake. I don't know, he, did, he had the Gilda Goose to block with. Never mind. Gilda Goose flies. And it's a giant crisis. Wow. Broco showing you how it's done. But I think Kuneo just got really bad hands both games. March for five. Oh, and then he's gonna play locks it on. Okay, this is pretty strong. He's like, hmm, that might actually be bad for me. <laughs> he's gonna take a little pause. Hmm. Okay. Just put fourteen power on the battlefield. Okay. Oh, he's got a full grip of cards. Still got Oko, still got a 6-6 six, six Hydroid Crassus, couple food. Oh shit, and he got Legion's in. That's gonna kill all those tokens. Ouchies. Ooh, and he had the, dude, he had the formation too. That was gonna be such a disgust. He might have won, actually. Was that enough to win? That's 15, 20, 25. 28 damage, and he he can block three of them, I guess. It would have been 15 damage. Or he could block two of them, so it would have been 18 damage. Damn, he damn near would have won off that. Because, yeah, he would have blocked both Loxodons. 18 damage. That would have been 18 damage. Oh, it gives plus one, plus one counters, too. Dude, so gross. Yeah, that Legion's end really saved his ass. Really saved his ass. He would have been dead. We would have put him to two life, and then he would have had him dead on the next turn.
think Oko's got this one. Yeah, he has to get rid of the 6 6 flyer here, but he gives him Vraska back. <laughs> Feels bad. GG. Yeah, if he didn't have that Legion's End, I think uh, Selesnya would have definitely won that game. 100%. He wouldn't have killed him on the first swing, but it would put him to two life, and he would have just had it on the next swing, so. Soul Thai food, Simic food. Actually, maybe 111.5 does make the top eights. I don't know for the new Mythic Championships. I think there's more people that come to them now. So I think you do need, like, 12-4-1, or 11-4-1, at least. I don't think 11-5 makes it anymore. The Darby 10 4. Dude, Darby going for another top 8. Let's go, dude. Let's go, dude. LSV. LSV. Alright, let's go. Round number 15, Simic Food versus Jun Sacrifice. Okay, we haven't seen the Jun version of this deck. Fairly curious what red cards he's playing with. It's going to have Trail of Food and Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Cauldron and, you know. Oh, this is the one that plays the Rakdos guy that they lose a life for every... Or you can deal a damage for each permanent you sacrifice to any creature or player. I believe that's the wording on it. That must be the card they're splashing for. Alright, Guild of Goose. Uh, block. <laughs> Trying to sneak in some damage, bro? What are you doing? Playing some mind games? Also important to note, that guy is Rakdos Colors. It's black-red, so you can't kill it with Noxious Grasp, which they're playing main deck. So they don't have, like, a clean... All right, Midnight Reaper. It's the first time we've seen this card in this deck. 3-2 three, for 3. When a creature dies, you lose a life and draw a card. That's Corvald, the Fae cur Cursed King in his hand? What? Is that really that card? I don't think it's that card. I think the spotter is wrong.
Oh, maybe it is, because that's Angrath's Rampage. Okay, I might be wrong. I thought that I thought the Angrath's Rampage was that uh, that Rakdos guy. Never mind. Okay, I have no idea what that Jund Fairy King guy does. All right, Crass is on foe. Okay, Corvold Faker is king. Flying, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever Corvold Faker is king, enters the battlefield or attacks, sacrifice another permanent. Whenever you sacrifice permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on Corvold and draw a card. Seems good for this deck. Although he can be Noxious Grasped, unfortunately. He is green. How have I not seen this card yet? This is like the only card in the set I haven't seen. And Ethergus also hits him because he's green and red. These hate cards are crazy good. <laughs> People are packing so many of these main deck. It's insane. Oh, he does. That's okay. That's the the Rakdos guy. Okay, he is playing that guy too. I was gonna ether ghost the trail of crumbs. Probably a good idea. This is the in one of the engine cards for this combo deck. Mayhem Devil. That's the name of it. I 
And the third ether gust. He's like, are you kidding me right now, bro? Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, and he can still bounce two creatures. I think this is over. Or maybe he just flashes it in, actually. As a f it's got flash, right? Yeah, he can just flash in the 3-1 and just swing for the win. Yeah, having three Aether Gusts really, like, gave him this game. Because he just had a 4-4 four -four out, and he was just swinging with a 4-4 four -four every turn. He was just countering everything his opponent did, basically. Oh, but his opponent just misplayed horribly. He tried to bounce the food, and then he used the Cauldron Familiar in response. Just play the 3-1 Flyer, dude. You, like, win, don't you? He has no flying blockers and no way to gain life. He has no sack outlet. Oh, did he forget the Mayhem Devil trigger? GG. Looks like these Bulgari adventure decks are doing pretty good actually. Maybe they found the they found the deck to combat Oko. And it's basically just like a bunch of hand destruction and removal. And like adventure cards for so they can have a bunch of value. Alright, game two. See if Jund can uh, assemble its combo. 
Got the witch's oven. Angrass Rage, Sacrifice a Planeswalker, seems good. Or Rampage. Ooh, Voracious Hydra, okay. Probably a sideboard card. Alternate art Oko. I haven't even seen that before. Crazy. Wonder how much that's worth. 100 bucks probably. Mmm. Nebraska kills Oko. Play a 4 4 Voracious Hydra, cool. Agreed. Alright, he plays Wicked Wolf, fights the Midnight River, but he's going to sack it in response with the Witch's Oven. Get a food. Draw a card. Lose a life. Brass is going to die.
Tag him with a wolf? Yeah, he's not going to block that. <laughs> Make it a 5-5 five, five indestructible. Alright, the dragon's still alive. What can he do with it? You got Masker Girl. Alright, gets the goose and the druid. Not bad. Finds noxious grass, that's a good find. I think he blocked the voracious hydra here. Wait, what? Oh, he gets to draw a card off that whenever he sacrifices something? That's pretty good.
Yeah, I think the Jun player has this, maybe. I mean, like, hmm. Okay, he's playing a goose. Can he deal enough damage to him? that dude was thinking attacking like doing that series of play the ta sacrificing his blocker was like what are you doing bro like if you could have killed him that turn like what were you even thinking I don't know what that guy was thinking at all and he doesn't even have the green mana to play Veil of Summer like that was just I don't know what your plan was dude but it was a bad one yeah you're just dead now you did. Yeah. I mean, even even if he didn't have the Veil of Summer, I think you'd just lose there. Only two guys have to get through. Yeah, that was... I don't know what he was doing on that last turn. Don't know what he was doing. I kind of want to watch this. Kind of want to watch this. I like the the Jeskai Fires deck. It's pretty sweet. Ah, Oko. You may not activate Broko.
Oh, he's gonna play the Buccaneer. Or Borrower. Brazen Power. Buccaneer. I got Ixalan on the brain. Because I was looking at the Sorcerer Spyglass. It's from Ixalan, right? Or the original printing. Was there a Brazen Buccaneer? I think there was a Brazen Buccaneer. And I think it was a blue card, too. I'm not sure. I feel like there was, though. Okay, so he named Bronadon, so Bronadon couldn't destroy the Sorcerer's Spy class, I guess. And he's got Prison Realm, so yeah. I like that name. He's going to mystical dispute it, or mystic dispute. He was deep in the tank about that. He, I'm sure he was keeping it around to counter the fires of innovation. All right, he's got Oko now. Scooping him up. Yeah, he needed like uh, fires of innovation to like time wipe there to win. Dude, he's got three brazen borrowers. Damn. It's a great card. I've seen people play it in modern. It's like a Vendillion click, but you can only block creatures with flying, and it's got the the bounce of permanent instant adventure on it. And of course, it doesn't do the look at the player's hand like the Vanilla and Click. Vanilla and Click's probably slightly better still, but it's a pretty good card.
Boom, questing beast. So I guess the Simic version is playing like Questing Beast instead of like the black splash cards like Braska and Casualties. A little more aggressive. And the uh, the Brazen Borrowers. I don't know if those are sideboard or some number of them are, but that's a it's probably at least a two main deck card, if not more. They're playing those also instead of, you know, Noxious Grasp. That's probably the eight cards right there, actually. Four Questing Beast, four Brazen. Instead of four Noxious Grasp, two Vraska, two. Boom, hard casting the Cavalier. Unfortunately, he's going to be able to bounce it back to your hand. Yeah, he can bounce his shit for days. He has three of them. It's looking like the tempo. This tempo is just going to win. Yeah, I think he's just dead. He has to two spell. He can't two spell. Yeah, he never drew fires of innovation. Oh, we have the counter Mystic Dispute. Okay. Okay. Not dead yet, but I think he's still dead. He's got two more Brazen Borrowers. I'm just going to bounce him. Again. While getting in with that dirty questing beast. Yeah, he's got just the super tempo hand. You're just dead, Gregors. Gregors!
This is brutal. How does he even get out of this? I don't think he can. Like even, if he, even if he draws fires of innovation, he doesn't have something to like board. He needs a board wipe is what he needs. But even then, it's like the thing has flash, so he doesn't even have to play it during his turn. Well, actually, he does. Oh no, no, no! It's dead. Yeah, Questing Beast hits him for four and then kills the Planeswalker too. Yeah, you're just dead, dude. He can bounce two more things. <laughs> like, he'll bounce your prison realm and bounce your creature. GG. I mean, he knows he has another one in his hand. He saw his hand already. There's nothing you can do, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You did. Alright, the final round. Number 16. Ooh, no. Oh, yeah, there's still people with 12. No. Cassis. Boom. Locked. They're all locked. Yeah, it looks like even like 11, 4, and 1 might not make it, or one of them won't. Or 11, 3, and 1, rather. 12, 3, and 1. No. Yeah, 12, 3, and 1. I mean, 11, 4, and 1. Wait, are there no 11, 4, and 1's gonna make it? I don't even think 11, 4, and 1's gonna make it. Yeah, because the 11, 4's. Hmm. Okay, these people are gonna draw, right? 12, 3, and 1's are gonna draw if they. Are against each other. This guy's gonna draw, I guess, if he can. He probably already intentionally drew last round if he had 13 wins going into it. 13 and 1. Yeah, there might not there if this shakes up a certain way, an eleven four one might not make it. Yeah, you might just have to have twelve wins to get in. Alright, let's see. And you might just have to be twelve twelve four. 
to get in. All right, here we are. Round 16. Soul Tie Food versus Soul Tie Food. Okay. Well, I guess we were bound to have another. We only had one of these matchups today. Or yesterday. None today. Well, I think he's in no matter what because he's got two draws. So even if he loses this 11 3 2, that's uh, what 35 points. That's better than 11 4 1 or 11 3 1. No, 11 4 1. Yeah. Yeah, it's 16 rounds. That always messes with my head. Usually tournaments are 15 rounds. So yeah, he'll beat an 11-4-1. So I don't think an 11-4-1 will get in. Maybe. All right, we got Oko. We got Broko on both sides. Broko. Wicked Wolf just slayed that elk. Slayed it. He's got Hydro Crassus in hand. I think he's got another Oko and like a land or two. Not great. He's probably just going to throw out the Crassus here. On two. Yeah, he's got a Negate. That's not great. He's playing mid main deck Negate. Okay. Again, that's a super meta call because of the food decks. Although I guess every deck's playing like at least a Planeswalker or something that you can negate. That's value. Now right, he's going to Elkify the Wolf. He's just going to pass it back, yeah. I don't really like... Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
No, this is the other guy's hand. Okay, yeah, yeah. They have the wrong name up there. Oh, wait, never mind. That is Christensen. Okay, Basa yeah, Basad didn't want to play his Hydroid Crassus. He's just going to hold up Negate. Probably a good plan. I mean, he's only taking six damage, but still, it's not where you want to be. This is not really a reactive deck. It's a proactive deck, which is why it's so good. It just, like, does a bunch of stuff, and you can't really do anything about it effectively. If he just slams Nissa here, though, that'll be good for, uh, Bossad. Because he'll negate it. Looks like he's going to slam Nissa. Okay. He's going to run into a negate. Yeah. <laughs> Acting all cool like he might not counter it. As if, bro. That's like counter or dead. Alright, he makes another elk. Kills the Oko. Yeah, not looking good for Basad. I don't think he can really come back from this. This is the power of Oko right here. Like, you stumble it all, and Oko just, like, takes over the game, like, immediately. He's going to cross this for four. So I'm just going to Noxious Grasp here. Make a food. I know he's going to Wicked Wolf. Yeah, that's even better. Yeah, he's got the win on the table next turn. Yeah, I don't think there's anything Bussad can do. Bussad. Again, he needs a board wipe. Not very many board wipes being played. Just because there's, like, too many Planeswalkers. They should have probably made, like, a, a Planar Cleansing in this set. Feels like it kind of needs one. Oh, is there a planar cleansing right now? I know there was one. Did it rotate out? It was in like Dominaria, wasn't it? I can't remember. Alright, he bought himself a turn, I think. Although, did he? He's got Noxious Grasp and Assassin's Trophy. Is that just win it for him? Blocks the biggest thing, which is the wolf. Takes 3, 6, 10. Okay, he can stay alive still.
anyway, he's gonna knock. What's up, anime god? How's it going? One with the team. I mean, Gilded Goose blocks Wicked Wolf. Druid blocks Druid. Take eight. He's got two lands in hand, too. Yeah, he would need, like, a Masker Girl. Yeah, he just drew another land. Yeah, you're dead, dude. This guy's dead. I don't know what the fuck he's stalling about. You got land in your hand, bro. How does this game work? That's a that's a complicated question. It's a it's a pretty pretty complicated game. Magic the Gathering. It's a, in the simplest terms here on the screen, you got lands in the back. This is called mana, and then you got like the cards in the front, which are like your creatures and like your planeswalkers and stuff that you win the game with. The lands you use to pay the cost for these cards up in the front. Uh, and you can only play one of these lands a turn. And then you can play as many things as you can cast with those lands. But everything has a cost, right? And a color. There's five different colors. And you have to match those pay for those cards and both players have 20 life and you basically have to kill each other in simplest terms but the game is obviously much more complicated than that uh, you draw a hand of seven cards and you have to have lands to play your spells is it like Yu-Gi-Oh? not really Yu-Gi-Oh is a very simplified card game I mean, it's it's a collectible card game like Yu-Gi-Oh, but Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't have mana. It doesn't have uh, instants, which are like cards that you can play during either player's turn. Um, it's a much simple, more simplified version. Just like Hearthstone is a much more simplified version. Like Hearthstone, you only play cards on your turn. No. Matt, this is the first collectible card game ever made, just to let you know. Way back in 1993, this game came out. And then, like, Pokemon came out, like, I don't know, like, three years later. Like, 96, I think. Ninety six or 97. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! came out even after that.
All right, game number two. Looks like both players don't have a quick start. No Gilded Goose, no Paradise Druids. Wow, no turn three play either. You ain't big brain. <laughs> Watching my Let It Die. Yeah, I've been playing Let It Die for a few weeks. I'm kind of like putting it on the back burner. I'm getting kind of bored. Well, thank you for coming to say what's up. I hope you're doing well. But yeah, I do. I do. I'll do magic commentary on the weekends when there's a big tournament. This is a real. This is the biggest tournament, or one of. They have four of these a, a year. It's a, a mythic championship. But I'll probably play Let It Die again at some point. I might play this week. But I've been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight, which is that horror survival game. And some other games, Noita and uh, Hollow Knight. I'm at the very end of Hollow Knight. Alright, we got Oko. Doing his thing. Yeah, both of their hands were not very quick or strong in this game. You got rank one survivor? Nice! I got rank one killer. <laughs> Yo, is this game like... What's up, man? How's it going? Long time no see. That's cool, anime god. We should uh, we should play like Survive with friends at some point. I'm not like a very I'm not that good at Survivor. I'm much better at Killer, but you can carry me, carry me to victory. What have you been up to, Jesse? You uh, you see the new Pioneer format for Magic? You uh, made a deck for that yet? You know they they actually like are gonna do major tournaments with it. Magic Fests and uh, I think Star City is gonna do them too. All right, he's gonna Noxious Grass the Crassus, but he's gonna Veil in response. Veil of Summer is incredibly strong. This card gets played in Modern. And I think I've seen it in Legacy, too. It's very, very powerful. Two for one for one mana. No deck yet. Yeah, for sure. I'm not really going to, like, invest any money into Pioneer until, like, they do the bans. Because I'm sure they're going to ban a bunch of cards. Probably, um... Felidar Guardian is going to get banned. And, like, uh... A few other cards. Hydroid Crisis might get banned. I don't know. Hy probably. Mm, I don't know. Apparently, like the ramp decks are doing really well in Pioneer that play Hydroid Crisis and like some other good stuff. And then you got like the combo decks that are doing well. Alright, he's got Nissa on the board now. Yeah, this other dude, I don't know why he kept his hand. It was very, very slow. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. He's played two Crassus. 
in five turns. That seems bad. Yeah, his opponent's got Nissa and Oko on the board. Doesn't seem good for him at this point. He's got a Noxious Grass, these Planeswalkers out of here right now. He's probably got to use both. Or wait, no, he doesn't have any Noxious Grass. Yeah, he's not, does not have a lot of options right now. Um, I think maybe you Wicked Wolf the land. Oh no, he's going to play Oko, okay. Okay, he's turning his Crassus into a 3-3, which actually becomes a 5-5. Because the counters stay on it, even though it becomes a 3-3 creature, the counters remain, so it's just a 5-5 elk now. Oh, they already did bannings for Pioneer. Felidar Guardian, Leyline of Abundance, and Oath Anissa. Okay. Seems good. Those were both in the ramp decks, right? Leyline of Abundance and Oath. Or is that was that part of a combo deck? That was probably part of a combo deck, huh? Ramp, yeah. Yeah, that deck was doing very well. I know that. Alright, that would have been backbreaking if that Noxious Grasp had gone off, but he had a second Veil of Summer to protect his Oko. He took his Crassus. Played a second Oko. Okay, this is so he can kill the guy's Oko, I'm sure. Why didn't he take the 5-5 five five Crassus, though? That, that makes little sense to me. go down yeah I don't know why he didn't take the 5-5 five five one maybe because he wanted a flyer I'm not sure seems weird to me I think I'd rather have a 5-5 five five than a 2-2 two two flyer What can he do now? He has so many creatures on the. Why did it zoom in on the guy's creature? It's like the whole like weird zoom in thing they do is just stupid. It's completely unnecessary. All right, he's gonna throw out Nissa. Now he's got the mana flare effect on forests. 
and play what? Wicked Wolf? Kill his other land? I think that's what I would do. Crassus, what? Okay. I guess he wants to have two blockers. Yeah, I guess he's on just like keep the Nissa alive, but he's gonna lose the Nissa. If he wants to kill the Nissa this turn, he can. All right, he's gonna use Wicked Wolf in response. That seems bad. I don't know, I think he's just dead either way here. He's just too far behind. Look how many creatures he has. Look how many three threes he has. Five. And he's still got both Planeswalkers out, yeah. Although I think Basad still makes the top eight, even with a loss here. I think they'll both, both make the top eight. He's got another Oko. I don't think it matters at this point, though. Dude, he's getting in there with the elk. He'll block it.
Yeah, he just wins here, doesn't he? He can block two of the three threes. Takes 12. Yeah, he's dead. So happy. I think this is the first, that guy's first top eight. Feels so good. How badass is that? Oscar Christensen. Christensen. Do it, buddy. Do it, hands. Do it. Got his arm brace on. Boom. That's a crazy arm brace. That looks like some, like, Star Trek shit. Is that for, like, joint something or is that for like broken arm I don't know what exactly that's used for maybe he like broke his elbow or something something weird like that like limits your range of motion or something GG good job buddy oh and now we got oh this looks like it's for top this is for top 8 too Loser gets nothing. Winner gets everything. Hot food on food action. Well, looks like Strasky. Wait, there's no advantage bar? Strasky's got two Planeswalkers out, huh? Dude, Maxwell Mick. It's Maxwell Mick. <laughs> this format sucks. Yeah, it kind of does. Oko needs to get banned in a big way. He's way too good. Fucking Broco. Although, it looks like the Golgari, the Golgari Adventure decks are actually pretty good against these food decks. I think they finally kind of found a deck that was decent against it. Because Eli Cassis is... Uh, doing really well with it. I think he's only dropped like one or two matches with it out of ten. And I think there's another Golgari. I think there's two Golgari players that are going to make top eight. I'm not 100%. At least one is, but maybe two. But yeah, when you're like main decking color hate cards just for this Oko deck like yeah your main decking like everyone's main decking Noxious Grasp like f there's like four of Noxious Grasp in like any deck that has black which is like most decks that have black in them Yeah, I think Strasky's going to get this one. He has Oko and Nissa in play. I uh, don't You know, once you have Nissa and you're getting, like, the the double mana from her, it's just hard to come back. Like, and she's making creatures for you. You're just getting all these three threes. It's just disgusting. Yeah, he's just going to double chomp. He doesn't even need to, like worry about chomping he's making you know one or two three threes a turn
Alright, during his upkeep, he's gonna Ether Gust Oko. Or during his draw step. Yeah, that's so he can't play him again. Yeah, probably two at you, two at Oko. Seems good. Draw step. He's gonna he's gonna ether gust Nissa. This is just prolonging, though. He's going to Aether Gust in response, targeting the Crassus. Yeah, this is over. Strosky. Hugging the dude on the side. What, he's got some collusion going on here? What's up? I smell a rat. The Europeans over here, dude. Europeans. Up to no good. Alright, that was the last round. Let's look at the top 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 eight. Alright, we got a Simic, that's a or a Soul type player. Cuneo made it. Okay, so we have a gold uh Soul Tai Food, I don't know what this guy's playing. Golgari Adventure, Selesnya Adventure. Uh, Simic Food, Apollo. Um, okay, so we got, what? Soul Tai Food, I think this guy's probably food too. I don't know for sure. Food, 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 food. So we got four, I don't know what this guy's on. Four on a food version. Selesnia. Bulgari. 
I wish they would show, like, what decks they're on. They need to, like, do this better. Oh, right here. Is this it? Challenger World Championships? What the fuck is this? What even is that? Some stupid other thing? Why can't they just show a list of people, man? Why they gotta, like, parade them on stage? No one knows fucking what decks they're playing or anything. I barely know all the players up there. I really wish they would show a list of, like, what decks made it. Stupid. Come on, how, how many years have you guys been doing this shit and you still don't have, like, a list of, like, the top eight at the end? I hate that. They don't show the brackets either. Like, seriously, Star City Games is, like, so far ahead of, like, the people who do the, like, official Magic tournaments. Like, they do them so much better. Ugh. Disgusting. It disgusts me. Alright, so it was at least four or five food players. We can we can see tomorrow how many it was. But it's about what I thought it was going to be. I said six, I think. It was going to be six food decks. It's probably five. But, I mean, it's cool to see a Selesnya and a Golgari player up there. I don't think there's a Fires of Innovation deck that made it, but... Yep. That will uh, be concluding our day number two. For the Mythic Championship 6, Richmond, Virginia. We'll be back tomorrow for the exciting conclusion and top 8. Uh, this video right here will be going up on my YouTube channel, which will be HD scathing. Disgusting. High quality. Uh, and that's lock underscore daddy. You can also watch it on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash lock underscore daddy. Follow me on Twitter, which is at lock underscore daddy one for any updates on streaming and whatever else is going on in my life. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow.